Hey team, it's Mikey Millions here. It's about 11 a.m., I'm four beers and a shot of vodka deep, and in this video, I'm excited to talk about one of my favorite strategies, LEAPs. Those are long-term equity anticipation securities. Weird acronym, but this is a phenomenal strategy, and in those mid-sized ten dollars to $20,000 accounts, I think this is the key to building a large portfolio. And this is also the last step we need to go over before we're ready for the poor man's covered call video. If you haven't already, check out the videos on Greeks and intrinsic and extrinsic value. This video will make a lot more sense if you do. For those who came prepared, there's no time to waste, so let's get started exploring LEAPS. First things first, LEAPS is a funky acronym that looks pluralized, and because of this, some people say the singular form of this strategy as LEAP, but that's not actually correct. LEAPS is both the singular and plural name for this strategy, so that's what I'll be using here. To put the bottom line up front, LEAPs are long-term options contracts with expirations at least six months out, sometimes up to three years out. There's no standard definition for how far out a contract has to be dated to qualify as a LEAPS. They traditionally refer to in-the-money calls, but the definition has expanded to include both calls and puts in and out of the money. That's it. You pay a premium and you own the contract for years. You might say, Hey, Mikey, that sounds like pretty basic shit. What's so special about the leaps? The answer is this. Once you start getting into these long-term options, you get a degree of flexibility that turns these basic calls into a valuable resource beyond what you'd get with your classic 45-day to expiration call. These are options that a trader can use to speculate on price changes with leverage but limited loss or as collateral to trade calendar spreads, like the poor man's covered call, which I'm sure is why everyone's here. There are other reasons for using leaps too, but these are the most common uses. Let's take them one at a time and run down the line. The first and perhaps most common use of leaps is to speculate on price changes so that you can sell the leaps for more money later, or perhaps to execute your call leaps to buy shares. Let's say you are a fairly typical investor and therefore you are a long-term bull on Apple. You expect that over the next couple years, Apple will go up and you want to take a bullish position. Well, the obvious thing to do is to buy shares. But if you wanna buy 100 shares of Apple right now, that's gonna cost you about $12,700. Yeah, maybe you can do it, but that's kind of a lot and it'll probably be higher by the time I publish this video. However, if we use leaps, we can take equivalently large positions for a lot less money and will barely increase our risk. Here's how. We just did the video on Delta and Gamma, so ask yourself, what is the Delta on 100 shares of Apple? It's 100, or some people will say this as 1.0. A 100 Delta means that for every dollar Apple goes up, your position will make $100. And if you have 100 shares of Apple, that makes perfect sense. But if you want a 100 Delta on Apple, but don't have $12,700 to throw down for shares, you can buy leaps to get that 100 Delta and you can do it at a lower price. Here's a real life example. As I'm making this video, Apple is at about $127.65 and we can buy a call at the $125 strike expiring in January, 2023 for $2,785. The delta on that call is just over 62. So if we buy it, we spend only 2,785, but have exposure to about the equivalent of owning 62 shares of Apple. 2,785 is only enough for about 21 shares of Apple right now, but our leaps gives us exposure as though we owned 62. So we have almost tripled our exposure by using a leaps instead of shares. And keep in mind, this delta will only rise as Apple gets higher. If we wanted the equivalent of 100 shares of Apple, we could just buy two of these leaps for 5,570, and now we have a delta of over 120. For the cost of 43 shares, we now own the equivalent of 124 shares for the next 25 months. And to show you the power of leaps for speculating, let's say you did have the $12,765 necessary for 100 shares. If you were so bullish, you could in fact buy 18 leaps for slightly less than the cost of 100 shares. 18 leaps at this $220 strike will give you a delta of about 400, the equivalent of 400 shares of Apple for the price of 100 shares right now. And of course, 
If Apple rises substantially by 2023, then this gamma will push up the delta even further. This is how we will occasionally see people on Wall Street bets demonstrating how they turn $500 into a million. They buy dirt cheap leaps way out of the money, and as the stock price rises, the delta on the contracts rises with it. So in our Apple example, we might buy a 22 delta for a few hundred dollars, but if Apple were to rise like Tesla and reach $500 by 2023, these 18 leaps would no longer have a delta of 400, but perhaps closer to 1,780. It is very unlikely that we'd see something like that unless Apple joins forces with Virgin Galactic and builds an orbital mining colony. But if you are so bullish, it is an option. We would have ultimately bought the equivalent of 22 shares for each $680, but by expiration, we've got the equivalent of 100 shares per contract. That's like buying new Apple shares for $6.80 a piece. That's the leveraging power that leaps give you. It is true that you can also see enormous gains by buying short-term call options, but to go from a deep out of the money option to a deep in the money one by expiration, this is really only possible through leaps. Let's face it, Apple is not going to $500 in the next month, but it might by January of 2023. That's one of the reasons why we use leaps instead of short-term calls. Keep in mind this is a rosy illustration. If Apple were to go down, our $680 calls will decrease in value and we could potentially lose it all. However, we cannot lose more than our initial investment. You must take risk into consideration and not assume that the stock will go flying higher. You may wonder why we don't just buy shorter term calls month after month when we are bullish instead of buying one big leaps. The reason is that when it comes to leaps, time is of the essence and theta eats ass. Now what do I mean when I say that? You may not even be sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. When I say time is of the essence and theta eats ass, what I mean is this. Today is December 18th. If you were to buy a one month at the money Apple call, you're paying about $625. Get a two month Apple call and it'll cost you $950. So that second month is only $325 instead of $625 like the first month. This pattern keeps going with each additional month costing less than the previous. We can see the March to July five month period costing only $488 or about $97.60 per month. And by the time you're looking at June 2022 versus January 2023, you're paying $387 for six months. For an extra $387, you get six more months on your call. That's $64.50 per month. If we were buying calls month after month, those individual months would add up to be a lot more expensive. And that is super important because we don't get to decide when the stock goes up since we can't time the market. And it's also really important when you're theta farming like I am. That's what I mean when I say time is of the essence. Time gets less expensive the further it is from the present. So patient people can buy time very inexpensively by using leaps. And when I say theta eats ass, here's what I'm talking about. Theta is the amount by which the passage of time eats away at the extrinsic value of your options. Each day, Theta will reduce the value of your contracts just by the virtue of time passing. But Theta does not eat in this direction. Theta eats in this direction, starting at the ass end and working toward the head, so you will lose very little value to Theta each month in the beginning. One year from now, Theta will have eaten up this area here these thinner months of value disappear, and the bulkier near-term value remains. Since Theta can only eat extrinsic value, the passage of time will barely affect in the money leaps at all. This makes them very resilient holds for the long term. In fact, buying in the money leaps with a delta above 80 is my go-to strategy. For $4,663, or the cost of 36 shares of Apple, you can get an 82 delta leaps allowing you to buy Apple at $90 in January 2023. We can effectively double our Apple exposure for the next 25 months, and a high delta like this will also allow us to sell poor man's covered calls safely, and we will cover that in the next video. And with a theta of 0.012, time will barely affect this leaps, and Apple's price and volatility are the only key factors for us to watch. Now you can also do this on the put side, if you're like the one guy who's still bearish, 
you can buy the $125 put expiring in January 2023 for about $2,468 for a 38 delta, or two of these put leaps for about $4,936. That's a lot less collateral than it would cost you to cover a short of 76 shares outright, and doing this with leaps will also spare you from borrow or margin fees. If you've got the conviction for it, Put leaps can serve as a long-term alternative for shorting shares if you believe a stock will drop in the future, or to serve as a long-term hedge. Despite all this good, there are some risks to doing this. First, you won't collect a dividend while holding leaps, so if income is important to you, this may not be the strategy you want. Also, leveraging in can cost you bigly if your belief is wrong. If you are holding 100 shares of Apple and it drops $10, then you are down $1,000. If you leverage that same capital into 18 out of the money leaps, and now you have a 400 delta, then now you are down $4,000. Even if you aren't leveraged in and you just own one leaps, you are still going to lose the value of your delta for each dollar the stock drops. So if you have an in the money leaps with an 82 delta and the stock drops a dollar, your leaps is going to drop by about $82, since your 82 delta is giving you about 82 shares worth of exposure. Despite all the good things about leaps, Remember that leaps can go against you, and although your risk is limited to what you invest, expiration will eventually come, and you don't want to be holding out of the money calls when it does. And last warning about leaps. Sometimes, certain strikes and expirations can be thinly traded, so the bid-ask spread is wide. This can make it hard to get a fill if you're trying to buy near the bid. Often, you'll have to set a limit order, become the new bid, and await a fill, and I can prove that too. If we open Robinhood and go to the January 2023 expiration on Triple Q's 250 strike, we can see a volume of only 8 at around noon, and there's a bid ask spread of 78.50 versus 83.50, so $500 apart. If I now go to Merrill Edge and use their complicated order entry system that they've probably been using since 2007 to place a bid at 78.51, then we can go back to Robinhood and see the new bid is now updated to that price. That 7851 bid is me over on Merrill Lynch. And as you'll notice, I'm not getting a fill by raising the bid one cent with my limit order. In fact, I'll cancel this because I already have two of these leaps and I don't necessarily want another. And if I go back to Robinhood for good measure, you'll see the bid drop back down to 7850. If you want a favorable fill, you can set a limit order above the bid and just wait for a fill, or if you're impatient, Start with a limit order at the mark, and then walk your limit up every few minutes until someone sells to you. You can always buy at the ask, but then you might be overpaying. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad investment, just that you might be throwing out some extra cash. That was a lot, but leaps are a mature way to speculate, so it was important to cover it from all angles. And here's the second use of leaps. Leaps can enable some exotic option strategies, the most well-known of which at this point is the poor man's covered call which I promise will be the next strategy video. We can't trade poor man's covered calls if we don't know Greeks and leaps. For now, let's look at just one teaser example of the PMCC. In a poor man's covered call, you're using an in-the-money call, a leaps if expiration is long enough, as collateral to sell covered calls instead of 100 shares. Let's say you would love to sell covered calls on Square, but you don't want to spend $23,400 on shares. Instead, you can buy an in-the-money call with a delta of 80 expiring in June 2021 for about $6,550. For the next six months, you can sell covered calls on Square. You'd be collecting premiums several times over those six months, and since your long call is in the money, there isn't much extrinsic value for Theta to eat away at. Even if Square doesn't rise over the next six months, there is only $1,152 of extrinsic value on this contract. The passage of time alone cannot reduce your call's value by more than that over the next six months, and you can safely grab most of that with a 35 delta expiring in 30 days. Some people, and I'm one of them, will go straight for a very long-term leaps when using this strategy. So instead of June 2021, I'd buy the January 2023 expiration. You get lots of time to sell covered calls, which I enjoy, and you can hold the leaps naked without having to worry about theta at all, which I will do in times of low volatility. But there are some disadvantages to that, the biggest of which is that it's less capital efficient than buying shorter term in the money calls and selling covered calls against those like I just demonstrated with Square. That's a more classic and cheaper version of the PMCC. 
There are a couple of different points of view on that, which we'll get into in the full PMCC video. But this is nevertheless a great way to start selling covered calls at a discount. Leaps make that possible. As far as my accounts are concerned, Theta farming with the PMCC is game changing. Stand by for more elaboration on this. I do caution now that if you want to start trading PMCCs without waiting for my video, at least watch the Tasty Trade video first. If you screw up a PMCC, you can actually lose money even if the stock goes in your favor just by too much. So be cautious with this, or just be patient and await my video. I promise it's coming. And there we have it. Leaps are great for speculating and for enabling more exotic spreads. I hope you all see a way that leaps might fit into your strategy. In the next video, we will talk in more depth about how these leaps fit into the PMCC and get everyone's theta farm planted. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time.